Hello everyone. Today we're going to cover some graphic symbol properties as well as motion tween properties. And what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and open up ActionScript 3.0. And within ActionScript 3.0, I always like to change my stage size to 1280 by 720. And I'm just going to go ahead and center stage and zoom out once. So what I'm going to do today is show you um, one a color change animation and then later on we're gonna just rotate it and we're gonna make some modification to that symbol um, symbols themselves are kind of confusing so we're gonna go ahead and begin to just dive right into this so the first thing I want you to do is go ahead and select an oval the oval tool and have any color you want selected and we're going to simply draw a circle. And within this circle, what I want to do is I want to make this change co a, to a different color every frame. So in order to do that, I can go ahead and do right click, insert keyframe, and now I have two instances of the same frame back to back. Now on the second frame I'm just gonna go ahead and select a different fill color and I'll go to red and I'll fill that color in. So now when I go ahead and scrub back I have a blue circle and a red circle. The other way to insert a blank keyframe is F6. I really like to use keyboard shortcuts. They allow me to work much more quickly and more efficiently because the faster I can work the more I can get done in a shorter time period but I'll go ahead and show you one more time the long way right click on your timeline insert keyframe from here on out I'll be using keyboard shortcuts though so as far as inserting uh, inserting a keyframe so now I've got three circles one's blue one's red and the last one's red I'm gonna select a different fill color and I'll choose green this time and I'll fill it in and I'm gonna press F6 on my keyboard and I'm going to go to uh, yellow and I'll press F6 and I'll change it to pink and F6 that's turquoise F6 um, see if I can find like a purple and there we go F6 and uh, maybe an orange so now what I have here is an animation when I play it back eight frames eight different colors now I'm gonna go ahead and name this layer and I'm gonna name it color change animation and the thing about um, naming your layers I can't stress enough to name your layers it makes animating so much easier especially when you start getting lots and lots of layers so one of the things from here what I'm going to um, do is I'm going to go ahead and I want to convert this to a symbol now recently what we've been doing is we've uh, with the labs one and two we converted it to a symbol we just kinda selected our object and right clicked and convert to symbol that won't work this way because if you notice in my timeline here I only have one frame selected so if I were to convert this to a symbol you'll notice only the first frame is a symbol the next one is not and you can tell by that blue bounding box and if I were to go over to this symbol and I'm gonna double click on it really quickly you'll notice it's only one frame of animation so I'm gonna undo that a couple times just to make sure Okay, I think I'm good there. Yeah. 
All right. So back to this point, that will not work because it only highlights one of the frames, which would be really tedious. And if I did that for each frame, it still wouldn't play because it's not within the symbol itself. So what we do is located here in your library. Down here, you have a new symbol. Click on that. And what we're going to get here is I'm going to call this color change animation. And make sure your type is a graphic. And press OK. Now we don't have anything in this symbol. I like to think of symbols as this um, sort of folder arrangement of files. So my main file is, my main folder is my scene one. This has everything in it that's uh, I want everyone to be able to see. And then from there, I have like subfolders of symbols. Now, it's confusing to get into it because each symbol has its own timeline. And the stage, each scene has its own timeline. So I think of it as folders with files in them. I think that might help you understand what they are. So like your Finder in Safari, or Finder in Apple, uh, Macintosh. Uh, your Windows Explorer and Windows. These are sort of like um, your your file sort of finder, Windows Explorer, but of animated symbols. So within each one of these has your files. And I like to think of the layers as the files and the um, actual symbols as the folders. So maybe that helps, maybe it doesn't, but it's really the best explanation I've got up to this point. So what I want to do is I have nothing in my color change animation. I'm going to copy my layer here. Or another way you could do it is just highlight these frames, just click at one point, drag, and just highlight them all. Right click, copy frames. Either one will work just fine. I'm going to double click into this folder of my color change animation, the symbol they call it. And I'm going to go ahead and right click on the first frame. And I'm going to do paste frames. Now I have a whole bunch of extra frames here because I had them highlighted when I copied them. What I can do to get rid of those, click, drag, remove frames. The other way to do it, just copy layer. This one's probably a little bit easier. And then right click on your, any layer in that symbol, paste layer, and that should work a little bit better. So either way is just fine. So here is my animation right over here. If you don't see it when you paste it, let's just say like I just didn't see it. When If you don't see it when you paste it in your uh, symbol, it's there, believe me. You'll notice it change in your library, the little image preview. But you just got to navigate around or just zoom out and you'll be able to see it um, just fine. So now I'm going to go back into my scene one. So this is my sort of folder arrangement. Now in my scene one, I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to call this uh, color change symbol. And my color change symbol is going to be located right over here, my color change animation symbol. And I have nothing on this layer at the moment, but I'm going to go ahead and just click this, drag this on the stage. Now, what you're going to see at this point is that they're both identical. They both do the same exact thing. One just has a blue bounding box around it when I select it, and the other one doesn't. However, there is a major difference between the two is I want to go ahead and add more frames. The major, major difference between the two of these is that one loops and the other one, and the other one doesn't. Now, looping is a, a term in animation that is used to describe how it repeats itself. So I'm going to go ahead and just press play down here on the timeline. And you'll see this one stops at frame 8, where this one will keep going. And I have this up to frame 8. 80 so it repeats itself 10 times so this one's able to loop now I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one because I no longer need it if I ever needed to copy any of the information from this point 
I could just go ahead and double click in here, be within my color change animation folder, technically symbol, and then I could copy my information here as we did earlier. So I've got my color change symbol. Now what I want to do is I want to show you some of the properties in here. So there are things like color effect. Uh, you can change brightness. So there's a little slider here to adjust the brightness. So whatever you want it to do. By default, is it at 50? No. Zero. OK. So then tint, you can adjust the tint. You can slide these things around and make all types of changes to it. Uh, advanced, you can change all these information to change different properties of it. Um, alpha, you can adjust the opacity or transparency. In uh, Adobe Animate, they call it alpha. And here, located in the looping, what we have is under loop, we have play once and single frame and loop. Now, one of the cool things about this is that I can change this to play once if I only want it to play once, just like it only played once when we had it on the main stage. I could change it to be a single frame and it won't animate at all. It'll just stay at one specific frame. And the other thing is I can do with it and I just click on it to bring this open. The other thing I can do is I can adjust the first frame. So let's say I want it to be on a single frame. I don't want it to animate, but frame five. And now it's at frame five or frame four. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to click on your symbol. I want you to change it to loop. Make sure it's on loop. And I want you to go ahead and drag two more of these onto your stage. These can all be on the same layer. Click and drag. And on the second one, I want you to change the starting frame. Doesn't matter which one. And I want you to do that one more time. And I want you to change the starting frame on this one, the first frame. And I want you to do this at least three times. Now, I want to go ahead and show you one more thing that's really neat. So, a couple more things. So, there's three things all on the same layer here. Now, I don't necessarily always want everything on the same layer. In fact, I never really want anything on the same layer. But I'm going to show you a really cool way in a moment here how to go about changing easily, at least with symbols, to... Um, readjust and reorder your your layers and it'll do it for you automatically so go ahead and just highlight these just highlight all three of them right click and do a distribute two layers and you'll notice it just distributed all three of them to a separate layer and it uh, the, f the original layer is blank so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one and it just takes the name of the symbol. So that's where that name came from. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and change this one to 1, because that's the first frame it plays on. Let me go ahead and show. Oh, no, this one's actually frame 5. And then this one is 3. And this one is one. So I have my three different layers. I just distributed all three of them to a different layer. And then um, I just renamed them just to make it easier for you. So it, it automatically just took all these layers and put them on their own layers for me, which is awesome. The, the really long way to do that is to uh, cut and paste. So it, you would cut something from a layer, create a new layer, paste the layer, paste your whatever it is you're copying onto the new layer. 
and then there's also a paste in place so generally you want to do a paste in place too so um, it's a lot longer to do that way whereas this way you can just distribute to layers now another thing I want to show you is I want to show you that you can modify your symbols just because they're on the stage doesn't mean you can get, can't go back within them and make some changes to the art so I'm gonna go back into my color change animation I can double click on any one of these um, they're all the same instance of each other so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just double click on any one doesn't matter which one and I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna call this um, uh, cross so what I'm gonna do from this point I'm gonna take my line tool I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit and this doesn't need to be perfect but I'm going to go ahead and just create a cross and the next thing I'm gonna do is go to my scene one and zoom out you'll notice all three now have a cross on it so I have three animations all starting on a different frame all animating and I've now modified them as well now the other thing I want to show you is I just want you to go ahead and start to make these uh, have motion tweens on them so go ahead just right click create motion tween right click create motion tween I'm just clicking anywhere on the timeline making sure I'm on that layer and I'm creating motion tween and from here now we've m animated these using the uh, transform tool the free transform tool and the selection tool just changing the position of it and we've maybe dabbled around with changing the rotation but I want to show you a better way to change the rotation so if I go out to like frame 30 and I rotate this it doesn't even I changed the rotation this way but it's actually rotating the other way so I want to go back and show you a better way to rotate something and what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply using my selection tool on I'm gonna click on my symbol and oh, excuse me I'm not gonna click on the symbol I'm gonna click on the timeline of the symbol so I can affect my uh, motion tween properties so in here the better way to rotate them is I'm going to click on my timeline and then in here I can adjust the rotate so I can adjust this to rotate let's say three times and now when I play this you'll notice it automatically diamonds it over here it doesn't do it on the frame that I told it to it'll do it on the very last frame and I'm gonna go ahead and play it so now I have one rotating okay one rotating so I can go ahead and click on this again so I have it rotating three times if you wanted to add more uh, rotation to it this is the amount of times it'll rotate 360 degrees and this is additional degrees that you would want to add to it for extra rotation so if you wanted it to rotate an extra 90 degrees and this will adjust the direction of it so I can have it rotate three times plus 90 degrees clockwise that's what CW stands for or counterclockwise so I set it to counterclockwise I press play and there it goes so I'm gonna go ahead and change this I'm gonna have it rotate two times oops two times at zero degrees press play okay and now I'm gonna rotate the one on the far end and if you remember you can't just click on the symbol because that'll bring up your properties of the graphic symbol you need to click on the timeline so that you affect the properties of the motion tween so I'm gonna change this to two times and go ahead and play it and now I've got these rotating so pretty cool easy little features um, we've done a couple things we've created color change animations frame by frame we've created a symbol in the library we've dragged and dropped multiple instances of it on the stage we changed the starting frame 
inserted frames and change the starting frame of each one so when it loops they each play on a different frame. We've added motion tweens to these um, and we've also modified them so that they within each one I can always add more or uh, change whatever I want to the art on the symbol. But remind you, unless you duplicate an instance of this, if you want one to be one way and another one to be another way, you may want to consider duplicating it because if you don't want it to affect every single one within that um, same instance. So that's another trick. If you were to duplicate something, then you could change, make modifications to that one without affecting the previous one or any other ones on the stage for that matter. So this is what I'm looking for, something like this. I'm going to press Control enter to export my Swift. And I have this sort of psychedelic rotating uh, wheels. And the only reason why I actually add the crosshair on there is just so you can actually see it rotating. Otherwise you wouldn't even notice the rotation. So um, That's all I'm looking for for this particular lab. Um, if you have any questions, inbox me. and. I hope you enjoyed it.